Gloria a Dios. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised, O oh God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless everyone. Amen. I just um want to welcome everybody that's tuning in. I'm going to give it a few minutes. God bless everyone. Amen. God bless. God bless. God bless. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to begin with a word of prayer. Amen. Before I start with a short message I have for today. Amen. God bless everyone. God bless. God bless. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come boldly before you, giving you thanks and giving you praise. For this is the day that you have made, Father God, and we'll be glad in it, oh God. I ask you, Father God, to move in each home, Father God, that you may restore those that are in need, Father God, those that are sick, Father God, that you may set them free, Father God, that you may heal them, those that are in bondage, Father God, that you may liberate them, oh God, those that are Father God, that you may give them gladness, oh God. In Jesus' name, Father God, I ask you, Father God, that this word, Father God, may bring life to each and one of us, oh God, that you may minister to each one in their homes, oh God, that the same way that you touch my life, you may touch theirs, oh God. In Jesus' name, I pray and I give you thanks. Amen. And I want to begin reading the word of God in Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, and the verse that God was ministering to me was, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but the fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. And when I was reading this word that God was ministering to me, I was like, Lord, what do you want me to bring forward this Thursday? Amen. And he was talking to me about the fear of the Lord. And there's two, two fears. There's the fear of the Lord and there's the fear when you fear man or you, you have fears in your life, which means being scared, being afraid of things happening, being uh, scared and afraid and fearful of the unknown, like what's been happening nowadays. Amen. But what the Lord wanted me to speak to you today was of the fear of the Lord. And when we look at this word, the fear of the Lord is the respect that we have of God, the reverence that we have for God, the fear that we have of God. Often we hear people speak about the fear of the Lord and um, they say you need to fear God with all your might. Amen. And um, the book of John, 1 John chapter 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment, 
but he who fears has not been made has not been made perfect in love and what john was speaking about he was talking about two fears being scared and being respectful and nowadays what god is calling his people is to respect him to have reverence towards him i don't know if what's been happening nowadays and i was speaking to the church all these days i've been speaking to my church and i said um it's not gonna stop god wants to have a relationship with his people and along the way people have gone ashtray they have gone backwards instead of forward some have come to christ either because they scared or because they fear god and when i say fear god is because they have reverence or they respect god or others have gone astray like i said along the way because they have given up and they see everything as a threat when we speak the word of god or when they hear anything that has to do with god people tend to turn their ways back to their old ways acting like if everything that's going on is done by men because when men doesn't know what's going on and they don't know the outcome and they have anxiety or uncertainties they have all these questions in their minds they automatically want to attribute things to man to science to different things not knowing that the only person in charge of this world and that can give us say so or can say this will come through is god the only one that has authority to what's going on around the world it's god he's the only one that can say satan since the beginning of time and i rebuke him in the name of jesus has to ask permission in order to get things done. He still has to present himself before God. The Bible says and me, many people quote this and say, "Oh, he 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 sneaked up on God." Nobody sneaks up on God because God is God alone and he is knowing God. He's a knowing all. He knows everything. There's no one that can sneak up on God. He didn't sneak up on in heaven. He showed up because he needs to give a report. He needs to report himself. He still works for God. Unpaid, but still works for God. He still needs to give give God attributes. He still needs to give God acquaintance. He needs to give accountability to God. He can't just do whatever he feels like it. He cannot do whatever he wants in the world without asking permission. He needs to have permission. And this in this hour the Lord is saying you need to fear God. The only way that we can get through all this is when you fear the Lord. Isaiah said in chapter 41 verse 10, he said, "Fear not, for I am with you." And this is talking about being scared. It's not talking about the respect. It's, it's talking about fe- being not do not fear. Don't be scared. I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God and I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you and I would uphold you with my righteous right hand. Why would God tell Isaiah, I would uphold you with my righteous right hand? Because there is a hand of God that is called the wrath of God. There is a, a hand of God that is it's the wrath of God. I don't know if you ever felt the wrath of God, but I felt the wrath of God. And oh my God, I rather when it, when you read the word of God, the the Bible talks about many men told God, "Lord, what about your mercies? I don't want to feel your wrath right now. I don't want to feel your 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 hand upon me. I want to feel the righteous right hand of God uphold me and bring me up and never be dismayed. Proverbs 1:24:33 through 33 says because I have called you and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded. He's talking about when his wrath came upon. His wrath came upon the people and he said i called you i try to get your attention and you refused me and you disregarded everything i was doing i don't know if you understand many have been disregarding what's going on i was telling the church these days until it happens to you 
until mortality comes in your house, until death does not visit your home. You will not understand this is real. Many people taking this, this pandemic as a joke. People make jokes. They make songs about it like it's, it's fine and dandy. Amen. But until it doesn't happen to you, until death does not visit you, until death doesn't come upon your family, you will not take this seriously. I don't think this is a joke. I think that, that God has been calling our attention so we can fear him and we can serve him in spirit and in truth. James says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. That the effective... And when he speaks about the effective, he's talking about being successful, productive, and constructive. Are we being effective in what we're doing? Are we being successful on what we're doing? Are we being productive on what we're doing? Are we cons being constructive of what we're doing? Are we, are we building character in people of what we're doing? He said, be fervent. Meaning be passionate and intense. Prayer of righteous man avails. What it, what, what it means is it benefits, it helps, and assists much. So when we confess our trespasses to one other, another and we pray for one another that we may be healed, we become effective. Then our prayer becomes fervent. And then when a righteous man prays, it avails much. It helps much. It assists much. It's not that I say I'm praying for you or I am writing your petitions. Am I, am I really praying for you? Candela, God bless you, hija. I, I thank God that you are there, that you join us. I, I, I need to testify to everyone that you was diagnosed with COVID-19 and you are there today. Marisol Rivera, thank you for being here with us in Facebook Live. Amen. I love Amen. And she's been a survivor in many things. Hallelujah. Come confess your trespasses to one another, but pray for one another that you may be healed, be effective, successful, productive, constructive, fervent. Habakkuk said, Lord. I have heard your speech and was afraid. Have we heard what, what God's message been nowadays? I'm not going to say that all this has been going on because God brought it upon us. But I can say God allowed this in our lives. And if no one has built a relationship with God, I exalt each and one of you. I, I command each and one of you to start building that relationship with God. Right now is not the time to bicker with one another. To be under each other's skin is not the time. He said, I have heard your speech and I was afraid, Lord. Revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. Habakkuk was living in a time where the wrath of God was upon the people. They would not listen. He was the prophet called for that moment, for that hour, for that nation. And he was like, you need to remember, though your wrath is upon your people, can you show some mercy? And right now, that's what we need to be praying for. Lord, have mercy. It's time to shut the door. It is time to close yourself in the closet. It is time to hit the floor. I don't know if you ever heard when, when there's a fire going on that you drop and you roll. It is time that you drop yourself to the floor, hit the floor. Amen. We need to hit the floor and ask the Lord to remember mercy. He said, for the earth will be filled with with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And when he was talking about the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In order to see glory, we need to die to self. Stephen said, I see the glory of God and the son 
of God at the right hand. When Stephen said these words, he was being stoned to death. Many people say, I see the glory of God. If you have not died to yourself, you see no glory. If you not, you have not died to the desire of this world, you have not seen glory. I don't know what glory you're talking about. But when we see the glory of God, we have died to self. We have died to desires. We have died to many offers that the enemy has thrown at our way. And you know what? Satan has been trying to confuse the people of God trying false, throwing false things to our way. So we can think it is God. It may look like God. It, it smells like it's oil, but it's, it's, it's another thing. It's not even God. God is not even in the mist. Do not be conformed to the things of this world. Do not be confused with the things of the world. The Bible says we need to. We need to read the word of God. In the book of Acts, chapter 7, it says, chapter 7, 55, but he being full of the Holy Spirit gazed into heaven. This is talking about Stephen. Saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, look, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. Looking, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. In order for us to see glory, we need to reject anything that's opposing to God's wills and ways. We cannot be conformed to this world. That's why tonight the Lord says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. But fools, fools will despise wisdom and instruction. The fool will not receive instruction. They lean on their own understanding. They think they are right. And the, you, the, th the thing about the fool, of the foolish, about the fools is then they try to gather up people to be on their side and tell them their version and sugarcoat it. This is how I, I preach because I need to, to capture those people that, that need to know about the Lord. If the Holy Spirit is not sufficient for the people, if the Holy Spirit of God alone is not sufficient, then whatever you may say is, is worthless. It's not even... It's not even valuable. I don't know what are we trying to do nowadays. Nowadays we're trying to, to gain people using our own methods. The last time I remember, the Holy Spirit is sufficient for me. <laughs> Since the beginning of time, the Holy Spirit has been sufficient for me. Ain't, ain't, ain't no way around it. We don't, we don't need to turn it around and fix it because we're living to 2020. Well, tell me what happened now. You all had an agenda. I had an agenda. My agenda was full to the, net, to, to the end of December. But you know what happened? God said, booyah, I'm going to disturb your agenda. The agenda is going to go bye-bye. It's my time. It's my time. It's me time. <laughs> It's my time. What are you going to do now? I was telling the church months before this all happened. I was telling the church, what if is God? How do you rebuke God? How do you cast out God? Because we're, I'm so, well, me, I'm so used to casting devils, running after devils and casting them out to the pit of hell and rebuking them in the name of Jesus. I run after devils. And I be running around my house taking the anointed oil and spilling it all over my house. But when is God? How do you, how do you rebuke God? How do you tell God, get behind me? You're disturbing me. How do you do that? How do you rebuke God? <laughs> God is saying to you, how do you like me now? <laughs> how do you like me now? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost today. 
my God. Romans 3 says, as it, writ as it is written, there is none. Listen to me carefully. This is Paul speaking to the church in Romans 3 verse 10 and on. There is none righteous, not one. There is none who understands. You trying to make understanding of everything that's going around you? <laughs> I have news for you. Way before, in the book of Romans, Paul knew no one will understand. There is none righteous, not one, and there is none who understand. There is none who seeks after God. None. Because we seek God today. When I say we, I include myself. I told you God was speaking to me before I spoke to you. When God speaks to me, I like to share. I like to share because there's one thing I used to always say and, and, and I heard from my parents since I was a little girl. Is that you do learn from other people's mistake. I don't know. The Spanish people have some saying, tú no aprende con cabeza de otro. Pues yo aprendí con cabeza de otro. Porque cuando yo le vi la cabeza al otro que se le cortaron, yo dije, pues no voy por ahí porque me van a cortar la cabeza. Tú aprende con, con cuando le cortan la cabeza a otro. Sí que sí. Esos son dichos de viejo. Claro que aprendemos con la cabeza de otro. Yo no me tengo que caer en un hoyo para que tú veas que cuán hondo está el hoyo. Naya kuta rabase. You don't need to fall in a hole and me see how deep it is so I can know. So I can say, oh, no, I do learn. I do learn from your mistakes. That's why there's fathers and mothers in the gospel. But you know what? We have a bunch of bastards. In the gospel. You know what's a bastard? A kid walking without a parent. With no direction. That's a bastard. When I was growing up, I had a mother in the gospel. When I was growing up in the gospel, I had a father in the gospel. Those that would teach me the ways. Y hoy en día nadie quiere tener... Una madre o un padre en el evangelio. Todo andan a lo loco y a la deriva. Yo aprendo con la cabeza de otros. Claro que sí. I do learn. Marisol, I learn from what you've been through. I learn. Esther, I do learn from what you've been through. Freddy, I do learn from what you've been through. Church of God, I do learn from what you've been through. There's a teaching every day. I don't need to fall in a hole to know how deep it is because you fell in it. By you falling, I can see how deep it is. My job and my duty is, the Bible says this, is two better than one. Two are better than one. My job is to lift you up. Lift you up in prayer. Lift you up in, in, in fasting. Lift you up in vigil. Lift you up. That's my job. Your job is to lift me up in prayer. Paul continues saying, There is none who seeks after God. Not one. Not one. Because you know what? The Bible says, the, that we are servant, worthless servants. Whoa. You know what that means? Worthless? Because we did what we had to. But then we went back to ourselves. I pray today. Oh Lord, I, ha I, I pray from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. And I'm exhausted. Give me a break. I need a break from you, Lord. Really? <laughs> there is no vacation in Christ Jesus. Jesus taught us that he taught us well. He said, pray without ceasing, meaning your mind, even if you're showering, even if you're cooking, even if you're working, whatever you're doing, your mind is connected with the heavens. This is why all this that's happening took many by surprise 
because they were not listening. Their ears were not in tune with heaven. When your ears are in tune with heaven and something happens, you're ready because God speaks to his people. He doesn't, he doesn't do things surprisingly. No, he doesn't. And maybe he might not tell you everything. But he will tell you. I remember when he told me, my servant, get ready. There's a famine coming. And he told me this in 2006. I was telling my church. So I was filling up my closet with a bunch of things, water and whatever the case may be. I was getting ready for 2020. Because <laughs> he said, get ready. But you know what? We're, we're like, we're like the little kids when you go for a long ride. You know when you're going, going from one state to another. Are we there yet? Is it time yet? <laughs> Is it happening now? If God gives you a warning, just listen. Just obey. You don't need to know when it's going to happen. Just listen and obey. That's all we need to do. And then... Paul continues to say, they have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There's none who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of the asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing. Whose mouth is full of cussing today? <laughs> Who's cussing today? This is why many don't speak in tongues anymore. And I'm not saying speaking in tongues is, 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 is that it's a must. There's people that don't speak in tongues. But if you will stop cussing. Yeah, that's right. Stop cussing. <laughs> Your mouth cannot have two waters coming out of it. Cussing, lying, and all that good stuff. Stop it. God, stop it so the Lord can fill it up with his language, with his words. He told the prophet Jeremiah, I will put my words in your mouth. I will give you my words. They will try to confront you, but they won't be able to. Because I have made you like a fortress city made out of bronze. What? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said, whose mouth is full of cussing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. If you feel in misery today, I do an altar call after this. And I'm not doing this to mock you. Let me tell you something. When I was reading the word today in the in the book of Proverbs the Lord the Lord himself the Lord himself was telling was telling Solomon listen my son to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching Listen, all you have to do is listen. And you know what? You can judge it by the book. Which book? The Bible. If I'm, what I'm saying is not written, that, that's why I am giving you the quote of the word. I am telling you exactly word for word what it's saying. I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm not telling you what I'm thinking or my thoughts or my dream or whatever. No, the Bible says, he said, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head. Why is it a garland to grace your head? Because in your mind is where you receive all these mental, crazy, anxiety battles. This is the battlefield of your mind. It's not me. I'm not even there to torment you. I'm preaching the word of God. I'm not there. I'm not in your house. I'm not there. 
I have nothing to do with what's going on with your mind. You over here making up thoughts of I don't know what has nothing to do with anybody. You need to take your mind captive onto Jesus Christ obedience. And after obedience, the Lord will cast everything, all the worries on all out of your life. But you need to depend on the Lord. I don't know who people I've been, I've been fighting with and bickering with. Because we haven't been in church in, in how long? I don't even know how many weeks. We haven't even spoken. And then he continues. They are a garland to, your, to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. <laughs> Satan wants your neck. But the wisdom, the teachings will be garland to your head and to your neck. The Lord told Peter, Peter, Satan has come to me. He wants to swift you like wheat. Boy, he wants to swift you. Swift you. He wants to get rid of you. But you know what? I'm over here praying while you cast, catching some Z's and it's okay. Because once I'm gone, it's all on you, boy. It's up to you to pray and fast and vigil, you know? Right now, you can, you're catching some Z's. And I have gone to the Father. So say him, say him himself will not swift you, baby boy. <laughs> Praise the Lord, hallelujah. My son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. Who has been enticing you? These days that you've been home alone, there's no reason for enticement unless you have opened that door for enticement. What doors have you opened for enticement? I told you the title of my message is The Beginning of Wisdom is the Fear of the Lord. And what God has been building in our character is to fear him. Not to be scared of him. Is to reverence him. To respect him. That's what God has been doing in our lives these, these latter days. These 40 days that we've been locked in our homes. Building character in us. Building a relationship with us. That's what God wants to do. He's been longing for this relationship. He's been telling ministers, evangelists, close the agenda. I need to speak to you. And it's not that I, be, I do a Facebook Live every day. I need to take some time for me and God to have a me time. It's not that I do a Facebook like every day so then everybody can join in and see how many likes or how many views I have. If God closed you in, if we allow this in this time of day in 2020, it's because he wants some me time. Mm. He said, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. They say, come along with us. Let us lie and wait for innocent blood. Let us ambush some harmless soul. Let us swallow them alive like the grave and the whole like those who go down in the pit. Cast lots with us. We will all share the loot. My son, continues the Lord to say, do not go along with them. And do not set foot in their paths. In the book of Proverbs chapter 1, God was giving details of how the foolish man would try to entice the man of God. Who's trying to entice you today? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But the fools despise wisdom and instruction when you hear somebody that don't want to be corrected and don't want to re receive instruction or wisdom that person is considered a fool at this time of my life 
I still have mentors in my life. I still need mentors in my life. I still think there's room for me to learn. Just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean I know it all. It means I still need to learn. I learn from the members. I learn from my kids. I even learn from my grandbabies. The other day my grandbaby came here and I had a surgery on my right leg. I broke my leg. I broke my ankle. And my grandbaby saw me lim limpy, Julacy, God bless her, wherever she is. And she said, Grandma, I pray for you already. Ugh. And she was so, <laughs> she was so disappointed that I was limping. It's just to tell you, sometimes God gets disappointed when we go back to our old ways. When we act like God has not been doing anything in our lives. When we don't recognize what he's been doing in our lives. The miracles that he's been doing in our life. The, the long way we, that when we look back. Do you see that long dark path behind you? That long dark path. The, those old memories. Have you not seen that you've come a long way? That the fear of the Lord has filled your, your inner that you have gained knowledge. Have you not seen that? We have come too far. We have come too far to right now go back and give up. Mm -mm. It is not time to give up. It is not time to look back. It is time to go forward. It is time to listen. It is time to stand still and know that he is God. Standing still and knowing that he is God is hushing your mouth. Listen and let God be God. At this time, it is not time for you to take action in nothing. Amen. God has called us to preach the gospel to everyone. That's all. That's all. But right now, God has been yearning for a me time, you and him alone, that relationship, build that relationship with God. We need to go back to building, building, building. Fall in love with God. Tell the Lord, Lord, I need to fall in love with you all over again. Where has my first love gone? In the book of Revelation, the Lord speaking to one of the churches, he said, you know what I have against you? You have lost your first love. If you have lost your first love, it's time to go back. It is time to retract and, and tell the Lord, Lord, I need to fall in love with you all over again. I want to love you. I don't want to be scared of you. I want to fear you. I want to respect you. I want to reverence you. I, I, I want to fear you. That, that when I hear your still sound voice, that I know that I know that I know that it's you, oh God. Because sometimes, you know, we go through these stages that you're like, is it God speaking to me? Is I want to know if it's God. Let me tell you something. God will not create doubt in you. When there's doubt in your head, when there's doubt in your mind, you need to retract and check yourself and ask yourself what's going on. You need to ask yourself, Lord, where did, where did I go wrong? I, I need to retract and go back and reconsider and lift myself up. If this is you today that, that you need to build that relationship with God, that you want to reconcile yourself with God, if you, you want to go back to where you started with the Lord, write your petition. We will be praying. We do pray for your petition. You can inbox me. I am Jackie Tapia. You can inbox me. I will answer. I will pray with you. Or you can inbox Janiel. He'll let, let us know. We do have a, an altar time here at the house where we pray together. Amen. But you don't need to go through this by yourself. You need to ask the Lord, Lord, I need the fear of the Lord. I need the beginning of knowledge. And that beginning of knowledge is fearing God. There's no, uh, no ifs, no buts, no way around it. That knowledge is fearing God. And the reason why 
many have gone astray, like I said at the beginning of my message, is because they have lost the fear of God. And if that's you today, if you want to reconcile yourself, I will pray with you. Amen. And I want you to repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I come boldly before you, giving you thanks. I ask you to come into my heart, mend my heart, mend my mind. Cleanse me with your blood, O oh God. Make me whole. Make me pure. Make me righteous. That I may fear you. That I may obey you, O oh God. That I may retract from my old ways, O oh God. Make me all over, O oh Lord. And that my name may be written in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made this prayer, you have become part of the family of Christ. Amen. And before I, um, I close with a word of prayer, I would like to sing a song to the Lord. <clears throat> Aleluya, gloria a Dios, adoramos su nombre. Give him praise right there where you are. Just lift up your hands and give him praise for a few seconds. Just give him praise. I'm feeling God in this hour, Aleluya. Thank you, Jesus. Just worship him right there in your house. Worship the Lord. Lift up your hands and worship with me. Aleluya, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Gloria a Dios, hallelujah. Gloria a Dios. Cantamos al Señor. Voy a cantar una alabanza en español. <coughs> Si me acompañas allá en tu hogar, amén. Yo sé que estábamos predicando en inglés, pero anhelo cantarle al Señor. Gloria a Dios. Cristo, yo te amo. Cristo, yo te amo. No hay nadie como tú. Yo no sé dónde estuviera si a ti no te tuviera, si no hubiera conocido al Dios que me ama. Cántalo conmigo y Cristo. Yo te amo, Cristo. Yo te amo. No hay nadie como tú. Yo no sé dónde estuviera si a ti no te. Tuviera, si no hubiera conocido al Dios que me ama y Cristo yo te amo y Cristo yo te amo no hay nadie como tú y yo no sé dónde estuviera si a ti no te tuviera si no hubiera conocido al Dios que me ama I love you I love you I love you 
my God. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And my heart will follow only after. I love you, I love you, I love you, Jesus. I love you, I love you, I love you. And I love you, I love you, I love you. And my heart will follow holy after you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you have any petitions, let us know. Write to us. Amen. After this live, we continue to pray for each and one of you and do not give up. Remember that the beginning of knowledge is the fear of God, is the fear of God and that none of us may lose that fear of God because if we lose the fear of God, we lose everything. Amen. Let's have our ears in tune with God. Let's have, yes, our feet on the ground. Yes, amen, on the floor. Yes, my feet is on the ground. But my ears are connected with heaven. Amen. And we pray that the peace of God, amen, be in each and everyone's home. Praise the Lord. And healing and liberation and salvation may come to each and one of you that are needing it. Amen. Bless God. May God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Give God thanks. Amen. Give the Lord thanks. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him glory. Amen. Until the next time, God bless you all. We love you. Amen.